this is the last of our series for Insect Week. And, um, and we've had a really great set of talks and, and it's been really fun to focus on insects, which if you look at the kind of biomass of biodiversity on the planet, insects are really super important. And they're also one of the things that sometimes people don't think of as being important because they include things that give us malaria or, or do, do other things that we don't particularly like. But first I'd like to kind of um, talk a bit about the society. The Linnaean Society is the oldest society that's dedicated to the study of the natural world. We were founded in 1788 by James Edward Smith and hold in trust the collections of Carl Linnaeus who's the person who, who um, invented the system by which we name all plants, animals, microbes, everything alive today. And um, we could be a dusty old institution, just keeping a few things in the basement for a few scientists to look at, but we have a much broader remit than that. Our mission is, is to inform, involve, and inspire people about nature and its, its significance through our collections, programs, and publications. And, we're a hub of communication for science through interdisciplinary um, learning. And we bring together people from all kinds of communities, all backgrounds, all ages. So you don't have to be an academic to be a fellow of the Linnaean Society. All you need, and that's the, this is the most important thing of all, all you need is a passion for the natural world. And I think many of us have that. I certainly do. I know Stanislav does, I know Padma does. And, and so if you aren't a fellow of the society, please do consider joining the ranks of fellows of the society to help us achieve that mission of, of informing and inspiring and understanding nature to, to introduce all of us to its value and ultimately to aid in its conservation. So Insect Week has been a really important way for us to kind of take this message out about how all kinds of nature is important and how all kinds of nature can give us insights into things that perhaps we might have never have thought about. And tonight's speaker will certainly show us some of those things that we perhaps hadn't thought of about nature. Stanislav Gorb is a professor and director at the Zoological Institute at Kiel University in Germany. And his research focuses on morphology, structure, biomechanics, physiology, and evolution of surface related functional systems in both animals and plants, as well as the development of biologically inspired technologies. And you'll hear a bit, a lot more about that this evening. He's received a huge number of awards from, from bo both academic and scientific, as well as industrial. And I think that really speaks to how the power of nature can really transcend across from academia out into many other spheres of life. He's authored several books, more than 500 papers in peer reviewed journals, and he has five patents. And tonight he's gonna to talk to us about fly on the ceiling. And I just want to say one thing before we start, is my great colleague, Erica McAllister, who probably should have been introducing this talk because we'll talk about flies. Um, would have loved it that we're having a talk about a fly on the ceiling. And she and I have spent many months in the field together. And I can tell you that after months in the field with Erica, my view of flies has changed completely. And I hope tonight, after tonight's talk, your view of flies changes completely as well. So Stanislav, over to you. And we're really excited to have you here tonight. Thank you so much for coming. Sandy, thank you so much for this great introduction. Um, and obviously, we share our um, our passion for for nature and uh, particular for insects. Um, and obviously, we share our um, our passion for for nature and uh, particular for insects. Uh, I'm entomologist by training. Uh, in the mean, mean, meantime, we work uh, also on uh, many different other animals, but uh, insect is still my, my favorite object. And today we speak about the fly, but uh, actually um, you may recognize that what we have on the cover here is not the fly. This is actually the beetle. Um, uh, actually, this uh, animal I selected uh, and make this discrepancy on purpose to show you that 
um, the phenomena we speak about today are to a certain extent very general for the majority of insects. And um, I try to guide you um, how through the um, research on the micro and nanoscale structure of the animals, we can achieve um, some, 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 some goals in, um, um, in, in, in making interesting uh, technological advances. Right. Uh, just a very short introduction about services and interfaces, because um, in this talk, we not only discuss insects, we also discuss some physical phenomena. I'm sorry for that, but it is must be. Otherwise, we will be difficult able to come to the technological point. So the surfaces and interfaces in animals and particularly in insects are very diverse. Some people call insects animal of surface because they have cuticle uh, as exoskeleton. And uh, this cuticle has a tremendous amount of different kind of uh, micro and nanoscale structures. And if we look at, well, randomly selected animals like these grasshoppers, we can find some sensors. Uh, here in the in the region of antenna, we find some adhesive structure attachment devices. We speak about that today. There are some surfaces which reduce drag during flight. Some surfaces with specific optical properties, for example, anti-reflection. Some surfaces with wear reduction, friction reduction, sound generation, respiration, filtering, thermoregulation coloration pattern, which is uh, not due to the pigments, but due to some structural um, um, structural features and um, self-cleaning. In this case, I show on the plant because many plants have these self-cleaning uh, features, but also many insects share the same, the same property. Uh, so it is um, a lot about surfaces and interfaces, and it is um, not only the chemistry of the surface, but indeed uh, structural features on the surface are decisive very often for a particular function. And if we look, if we take it uh, under the microscope, and that's what we did over the last, I would say 20, 30 years, um, you can find very different um, surfaces on, um, well, very different structure on the insect surfaces. For example, if you look at, a, at this image, um, uh, you see some surface with um, um, elevated kind of scale-like structure. This surface has anisotropic friction. If you slide on this surface, friction will be larger in one direction than in another one. If you look at this surface, which is B, this is uh, optical, um, uh, optically active structures on the eyes of the fly. Um, and uh, these structures are important to harvest more light. This is a kind of anti-reflective surfaces on, the, on, on insect eyes. Then we have some self-cleaning surfaces like on the, on the image C, some filtering structures like here, uh, which um, 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 equip um, and the breeding system of insects. Then we have some surfaces which reduce turbulences on, um, on some part of the body uh, or surfaces like, uh, like this one, which trap air underwater. So very many surfaces which have a structures for particular purposes. And that's what we're doing in Kiel. And um, this surface uh, has not only um, interesting properties from the academic point of view, um, uh, but also uh, we can use the inspiration from the nature to make similar surfaces for the technology with similar kind of properties. But uh, because I'm a biologist, I think that this is very important in order to mimic something. We have to understand how does it really work in the animal. It is difficult to mimic something without really understanding how the physics is behind these kind of surfaces. And that's why we carry a lot of ultrastructure st studies. We measure material properties, force range, and we try to not forget the whole animal. So we look what animals do with these kind of surfaces during their motion. And you can imagine that 
to measure friction, for example, or adhesion on really, really small features like insect legs, it's, it's not a very trivial task. You can hardly use uh, existing physical equipment for this. So you have really, you have to adapt existing equipment or even develop your own equipment to do that. Um, and that's why we also try to develop methods for characterization of these surfaces. And if you find interesting properties, we try to transfer these uh, ideas or, or features into material science, into, into technologies. Uh, and I will speak about that later on. But for me as for biologists, maybe most interesting part of all this uh, these, these business is to understand evolutionary tendencies. How do these structures appear in the, in the insect evolution? How they developed in the evolution? Um, and of course, this is also sounds like a very academic kind of task, but I would tell you one thing that um, if uh, we find that the same solution for the same, um, uh, for the same task appeared several times independently in the animal evolution. We can speak about a kind of optimal solution, or maybe this is just a one solution. And I think exactly this kind of knowledge is important for engineers to make something useful out of that. And um, well, if we speak about adhesion, maybe the king of adhesion among animal is, is the gecko. And indeed, gecko was, uh, was studied in the previous time very intensively. And uh, people find out that these animals use so-called one the walls interactions. This is interaction between the molecules on the foot um, and the molecules of the substrate of the surface where the animals climbing on. And uh, well, um, this is, you see some press echo um, with titles like superior climbing skills to atomic power. Uh, yeah, because one of the was interactions are interactions between the molecules um, and then sticky secrets. And then the question is why we should care about this kind of knowledge. And the answer is maybe we can use it for some kind of strange technologies. Um, and uh, of course, uh, even this knowledge that uh, animals use some kind of physical interactions is, of course, very important. But um, for engineers, the good question is what we should do on the surface to switch on this kind of surface to uh, uh, this kind of interactions. Uh, what, uh, how the surface should look like? What about the structure which uh, which lead to this kind of effect. And uh, this is a good task for biologists. So uh, actual biology should look very much on the, on, the, on the structure. And if you speak to the people from the industry based on this idea, uh, which kind of material do we want to develop? Then the people from the industry usually say, we want to have something sticky. Um, but actually, if we want to have something sticky, then maybe it's a good idea to use some kind of natural glues, like uh, to go to the seashore and take some barnacles and mussels. They are really, really sticky. They have real cements to stick to the rocks and even on the water. Uh, but if our question is, uh, do we want uh, these ideas for or this kind of, uh, well, uh, knowledge, um, uh, to use for making surfaces for locomotion on the wall on the ceiling, for example, for the robots. Um, and if we would like to build something which adheres very fast and to adhere to unpredictable surfaces and um, uh, to have something which adheres, but also is fast releasable, not only in a couple of cycles, but in millions of cycles and to have something which adheres to everything, but not to itself. Imagine if animals put feet together and they start to stick like in the case of the scotch tape. Uh, this is maybe, maybe not good for the animals and not maybe good for the material which we would like to develop. So this is then really challenging. And this is maybe then is a good idea to look into the, into the natural world. Well, um, it is actually not a big deal to put big body mass on the ceiling. You just need a lot of scotch tape. <clears throat> but don't forget that these men, which is using scotch tape, obviously, to adhere to the ceiling, will stay forever on the ceiling, but would not able to make any step. Because this is the static situation. A static situation, well, means there's no, no dynamics. Well, 
one can stay forever on the ceiling but not move. And in order to master this static situation, we have to counterbalance the body weight um, with two forces. We need certain adhesion which prevents falling body from the ceiling and we need certain amount of friction which prevents sliding along the ceiling. Um, well, this is sufficient for static situation. If you would like to walk on the ceiling, we have to solve two more problems which are not trivial at all. We have to make a contact in fast and reliable way and with minimal load on the ceiling. This is really important and we will discuss that later on. And we have to break contact also in fast way and with minimal force expenditure. Otherwise, if you imagine if animals put feet on the, on the ceiling and then have to produce a lot of force to debond from the ceiling, then probably from energetical point of view, they would be not able to scale, to run fast on the ceiling. Um, so that's why um, this minimal force expenditure is important for the counter breakage. So this sounds quite challenging. In the middle of the cycle, you need a lot of, lot of adhesion. You have to form contact quickly and break contact quickly and with minimal force applied to this process. Okay, so uh, now about insects. Um, why insects are interesting from this point of view? Uh, maybe they don't generate that much force in comparison to geckos, but as a study objects, they are much more exciting. Why? Because they, they, they live on plants and there is, well, first of all, insects are very diverse. There is about 1 million of described species. And most of them, them live on plants. And we have something like 250,000 species of plants. It's extreme diversity of quality of surface. Some of them, they are flat. Some of them, they are uh, covered by tiny little hairs. Some of them, they covered by, well, liquid drops, like in this case, uh, in, this, in the case of this plant. Sometimes they covered by tiny little um, particles. So you have big diversity and all these animals, they have to adhere to the surface. The question is, do they use the same principle to do that? Or there are two of them, or there are many of them. And uh, from this point of view, insects is, is an El Dorado for um, adhesive scientists. So if you take like at the beginning 600 of different insects from different groups and compare what do they have on the feet, um, well, you find out that there is still some diversity of, of structures, but uh, you, can, uh, you can order these two diversities into groups. We can find some adhesive pads, which are hairy, they are covered by tiny little hairs, and some of them, they are smooth. The hairy pads, they, of course, will generate good, good adhesion and good contact to flat surface, because um, well, if you bring these hairy structures in contact with flat surface, then all 100% of hairs jump into the contact and build proper contact. Um, but if, of course, the most, the majority of surfaces in the nature are not, not, not the window. It is, they are not smooth. They, are, they have a roughnesses at different scales. Sometimes different, these roughnesses are overlapping. Um, but in this case, these single hairs, they can deform locally and adapt to the local surface profile. And by these increase the contact to, the, to any surface and by these increase the adhesion. The same principle has also the smooth surface, but the smooth surface has a very important other feature. It consists of the material, which is quite soft. And due to the softness of material, this kind of structure can adapt also to the surface profile and build the optimal contact and increase adhesion. Now imagine if you would have on the surface instead of such a soft, a smooth solution or quite stiff hairs, but um, structured, um, and if you would have just a, just a smooth plate and try to be smooth but rigid plate, excuse me, smooth but rigid plate, if you bring smooth and rigid plate in contact with a, with a flat surface, then you would generate pretty good uh, 
contact area and generate pretty strong adhesion. But if you would bring the rigid flat uh, plate with um, uh, rough surface, then in the worst case scenario, you would have just a three point contact on this sur surface. And of course, adhesion will be very low. So both solutions are um, uh, appeared in the evolution to increase contact area and to increase it by this to increase adhesion. So this is evolutionary tree of animals, uh, of, of, of insects. You don't have to understand uh, the name of the single groups. Uh, here's just important to see this relationship um, uh, on the background of our um, hairy and, um, and, uh, and smooth pads. And what we learned from this diagram is that the hairy pads uh, appeared later in the evolution of insects. They were the first solution, which are smooth pads, appeared uh, initially in the, in the insect evolution and appeared several times independently. The same thing about the hairy pads. They also appeared at least three times independently in insect evolution. Um, and, the, and there is no third solution. There are two solutions. Sometimes we see the combination between the soft, soft pads, which are on the top um, 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 covered by, by the hairs, but there is no third solution. There is only two. And I think this is really important um, uh, knowledge, not only for biologists, but also for the engineers. If we want to build something similar for the robot, we have to consider this knowledge and maybe to do something similar. But let's first um, understand what's going on. How does it work? Why, for example, animals um, have this kind of um, um, structure and how do they really make this, this spe specially, especially good contact? Okay, let's start with a smooth attachment pad. This is again the grasshopper, but uh, well, another another species. Um, and if you look under the microscope, you see these uh, these tiny little pads, which are called aeoplantula. Um, the, but of course, the resolution is not sufficient to see much. So you don't obviously see any real hairs on this surface. Uh, but the question is, what about the material structure in such a smooth pad? And I already mentioned that uh, this material is very adaptable. It's very soft. Okay, um, it, we can use another kind of method. We can freeze these kind of pads and break it. And uh, we can use a cryo electron microscope to look inside of this material. So uh, the surface is somewhere here. And you see that this material is built of the fibers, which are branching in the vicinity of the surface. And the spaces between the fibers um, are filled with, um, with, with a fluid. And you can imagine that this material is also soft because it is consists of hierarchically structured fibers and filled with a fluid. And that's why this kind of material kind of flow into the, into the roughness and adapt to the surface profile. And of course, generate um, strong contact area and strong adhesion. Hairy pads, they of course don't have all that, but they consist of hairs. And here you see different, uh, um, uh, different animals. You see a couple of um, um, uh, beetles, you see some, some flies, some air wigs different uh, groups of insects which evolutionary maybe have nothing to do with each other but parallelly they uh, they evolved this kind of hairy solution for the adhesion and of course people from the technology say okay we can make hairs this is not a problem um, we can use different kind of um, um, of fabrication methods to make something similar and if you go in the web and look um, uh, like uh, insect inspired or gecko inspired adhesion, you can find um, uh, maybe these kind of structures uh, where people taking some polymer bumps, put it on the surface and use atomic force microscope to measure adhesion at the tip of every single bump and then multiply this adhesion by the number of bumps and end up with a very high forces. 
But unfortunately, if you take this piece of material and bring into the contact, even with the flat surface, the adhesion is not increased. It is actually even decreased in comparison with if you use two flat surfaces, because with two flat surfaces, you generate more contact area. OK, so if you make your features even pointed, then you can even further decrease adhesion because the contact area will be decreased. So if you use hairs which are very, very floppy, very dense and uh, very long, very tall, and of course, because of this um, kind of structure, they are very floppy. Then after producing these kind of nanoscale hairs, they start to stick to each other because the they, they bending stiffness is so low that they adhere and build again the bulk material. So um, it, it, this material doesn't adhere much better than if you use piece of bulk material. Well, in the same feature you see here, in this case, um, hairs also condense. Here's also condensed hairs. In this case, also hairs condense. Um, this image looks very nice, but um, it doesn't adhere at all because the material itself is very, very stiff. And because it's so stiff, it doesn't build contact even with this structure. So it means that flies has something different. They have some other solution, not just simply hairs. These hairs are somehow specific. This is the fly foot in contact with the surface. Um, and well, in order to understand this adhesive business of the fly foot, we have to do a lot of research. So we have to understand the motorics and the arrangement of muscles, what these animals do with the feet. We have to understand something about joints, uh, how the contact formation is coming during, well, how the contact formation is fulfilled and how the contact breakage is working. Uh, sensory equipment is important to position food. Uh, how do animals use the sensory information uh, from this substrate to put the food in the proper way? Uh, we have to know something about the material structure and properties, especially if we want to mimic this material. And today, I would like mostly discuss um, the, 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 the story about the contact mechanics. What happened here at the tip of every hair? how the hair build contact with the surface. This is probably the most important question to understand this adhesive business. And of course, we have to know uh, something about plant surfaces, about the features of the plant, which uh, where they, these specific animals live. Because among insects, there are some animals which are generalists, they can walk on any surface, like a ladybird beetles, or uh, there are some, or, or for example, the housefly can walk on any surface, but there are some highly specialized insects which uh, adapted to one or couple of surfaces. And this is again interesting to see how these specialization um, uh, are reflected in the in the food structure. Today we discussed this contact mechanics business, which is quite fascinating. So if you um, look um, by using this, this, this different kind of microscopy at the tip of the, of the fly foot uh, in the fresh condition, then you will realize that the fly leave some fluid uh, um, footprints on the surface. Uh, these image show uh, single droplets which are left um, as a print on the glass surface after after fly walking on it, so you see this hexagonal pattern of the of the of the drops, which correspond to the to the arrangement of the of uh, of the hairs. So if you look in the cryo ACM, you see these menisci, which uh, um, which um, are due to the to the to the fluid in contact between the hairs and, uh, and, and the substrate. So the fluid indeed is a part of the um, of, of insect adhesion. And the fluid was shown uh, many times for, for different kinds of, of insects, for bugs, for flies, for beetles. There is a quite extensive literature on a fluid appearance and a fluid chemistry. Uh, and the fluid chemistry was believed that this is usually um, some, some lipid-like, it's like some, some kind of fatty 
substances like like a sweat from from our hands um, um, but the question is where the fluid uh, coming from uh, previously people believed that the fluid is coming somewhere on the from the upper part of the foot and flowing through the uh, through the hairs and then and uh, and at the in the contact uh, but this is not the case because if the if this kind of sticky fluid would uh, um, would flow through the hair structure, then the hairs would stick together immediately, and that's what we uh, what we usually don't see in flies. And and the question is, uh, well, where the fluid coming from? Why ha hairs don't stick together? So the answer is um, quite interesting. The fluid is delivered at the tip of the hair. So which means that the hairs are hollow inside and the fluid is, is produced in the pad itself. And then uh, um, through, this, uh, through, through this cavity inside of the hair, the fluid is coming to, the, to this pore uh, below this, this platelet at the tip. And then as soon as the fly build the contact, the fluid droplet will be pressed out and will be delivered directly in the, in the, in the contact region which prevent, of course, the hairs from sticking together because the fluid is not flowing through the hair surface. But there are some hairs where there, there is no pores, so at, least, at least we didn't find any pores, but uh, still this, uh, this lumen is going to the tip of the hair and this membranous wall of the hair is so thin it is about 50 nanometers, which is extremely thin. Uh, well, one nanometer is 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 one um, divided by thousand micrometer. It is one divided by million of millimeter. It's so thin that the fluid is just sweat through the through 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 um, through this membranous area. So flies, in fact, uh, no matter how, they have a sweat fit. But again, is the question: What is the kind of fluid do they use? So people believe that uh, this is um, something, as I mentioned, lipid-like. It is uh, something fat, fat-like. Um, but if you freeze these uh, these droplets uh, and if you coat them in frozen condition with carbon platinum and then observed in the in the in the electron microscope at a high resolution you find out that the single droplets here you see single droplets at a high resolution uh, they consist actually of of two different fluids which are not mixable um, so the main droplet consists of the light sugar solution and the tiny little droplets on the top, they consist of the fat. So in fact, there is a micro emulsion. And the question is why do animals have this micro emulsion? Actually, we don't have answers. We have many hypotheses, but one of the hypotheses is by having these two different fluids, hydrophobic and hydrophilic animals are able to adapt or are able chemically to stick to different surfaces to hydrophobic and hydrophilic um, to just broaden range of potential substrates where they can hold. Another hypothesis is that in order to transport very viscous fluids like fat, you have to have some carrier fluid like water, because water has much lower viscosity. And, um, and uh, after water, tiny little uh, water-based droplet appear on the surface, they very quickly evaporate. And the, 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 the lipid remain, lipid, thin lipid layer remain on the surface and generate um, capillary adhesion. Well, I say this is capillary adhesion, which is based on the capillary bridge. What is capillary adhesion? If you take a piece of paper, uh, dry paper, and put on your window, it doesn't stick. Um, um, because the interactions between molecules on one surface and molecules on, on glass don't come into play because the distance between them is quite big. But if you wet the surface and put on the on the window, it holds because uh, you generate capillary bridge, which 
which hold this piece of paper on the surface. The same thing is with a fly, but of course you have to show it experimentally. Um, of course, we believe that this is capillary bridge, but how to show it experimentally? Because you know, these tiny little hairs uh, are in the range of one micron. The tips of the, of the hairs are about one micrometer, which is really difficult to measure. For this purpose, we use some, some, some physical equipment which called atomic force microscope. Atomic force microscope is a, a tiny little cantilever which is made of a very rigid material, usually silicon nitride or silicon. And um, uh, this uh, tiny little cantilever um, is um, um, uh, on the top of the cantilever, we focus the laser beam. And then we use a piezo drive to move this cantilever. And on the tip of the cantilever, there's a little kind of needle. And with this needle, we approach the single hair and kind of press it, press on the, on the hair. Uh, and of course, the cantilever uh, deflect in the upper direction. So, and we measure this deflection by by the laser beam. It is similar like in the old fashioned um, 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 audio player or um, uh, you know, um, uh, using compact discs. This is also laser beam, which is looking on, uh, on, uh, on, on the holes, so to speak. So this is similar way. So we, 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 we observe the motion or the deflection of the, um, of the cantilever by using, uh, by using this, this, uh, this laser beam method, this laser interferometry. So, and um, uh, we know um, uh, the rigidity of the cantilever and uh, by these we can recalculate the deflection in the force. And of course, if we press on the, on the, on, on the hair, uh, the cantilever deflects up. If we retract back, then um, and if you have adhesion in the contact, then it deflects down. And then, well, this deflection down gives us the information about the, about the adhesive force. And, and the, by using this method, we can measure adhesive forces on the tip of the hairs, but not just, just one measurement pro, pro hair tip. We can make kind of scanning uh, like 30 by 30 per um, measurements, like 900 measurements per hair tip and make a kind of adhesive map of the tip of the hair of the fly. And here you see this adhesive map. And what you learn from that, that in the middle of the hair, the adhesion is much higher than on the margin. Yeah, because here in the middle fluid will be collected because there is some little depression in this, in this region. Uh, but this is maybe not the most important uh, knowledge from this experiment. The most important knowledge that if we do this measurement in the hair, in air, um, uh, then we measure pretty strong force. But if we put it under fluid condition, the whole system, the cantilever and the hair, then the, the, the adhesion is going down to very low, to, to order of magnitude lower, which means that in the air, because we have this fluid bridge in the air, we generate capillary interaction or the fly generate capillary interactions. But if we put everything in the fluid, there is no real fluid bridge anymore because everything under fluid conditions and we measure actually no force at all. So which is the evidence that animals use the capillary interactions. But um, as I mentioned before, many different animals uh, in biology have these hairy kind of adhesive structures. Here you see some beetles, some flies, some spiders, which are not insects, even geckos, they also have hairs. All of them have hairy structures for adhesion, but only insects have fluid and these two groups, spiders and geckos, they have no fluid. They indeed use these so-called Van der Waals interactions. Uh, but all of them, they have hairs. But the interesting observation is that in order to use Van der Waals interactions, hairs have to be much smaller. And the insect hairs, they are a little bit larger. So the larger hairs, they need fluid. Smaller hairs, they don't need fluid. So if you make a map of the density 
of the these we call them terminal contact elements, these terminal structures on the hairs, um, then the density is much higher in animals which use Van der Waals interactions and lower in the animals which use capillary bridges. So insects have lesser density, has larger um, uh, structures and use capillary bridges. So now we know hairy structures are important for the contact formation. They are important to make, um, to make proper contact and generate adhesion. So the question is, can we show it experimentally? But the problem is that if you take fly, you cannot do experiment without, um, you cannot do the experiment and compare this experiment to some surface which is flat because every single animal has of course specific material properties and specific structures so uh, from animal to animal the whole world is changes so it's difficult to make proper comparison and in this moment we switch to the polymers we said okay let's design something similar like insects on the feet and let's play with that and see do we have the same effects or different? So what we did here, we um, used the laser beam and drill, not drill, but burn um, uh, the little holes on the, on the metal surface. And then uh, we, we used uh, the, the polymer impression material like dentists use in a, um, to, to, make, to make an impression from your teeth. And by the way, this material generates very precise, um, uh, precise copy of the surface. Um, so you see here now the um, the, the 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 copy of the uh, of our holes, and um, and you see these these little um, little pillars, which are of course much larger than in the case of insects. It is about 400 micron long and maybe 100 to 200 micron wide, uh, but this kind of structure allows us to make a proper comparison to this uh, to the measurement adhesive measurement on the same material uh, but flat and that's what we did so now see what happened so the, this blue um, data um, is the adhesive strengths which adhesion per unit um, surface area of the flat surface and our structure surface are these orange triangles same area, same material, but in one case we have structure, in another case it is flat and we generate much stronger adhesion just by structured surface. I think this is fascinating because actually you can do similar things with many different materials. So in fact, you can make material more adhesive by structuring it instead of putting some kind of um, of of, um, um, of sticky sticky stuff on it, so this is quite interesting. But our we had we had some problem with this experiment, and the problem was the proper contact formation, because um, we can generate some substantial adhesion, but we have to play with these samples to bring it properly into the contact play like 10 minutes and you have to have a, some really good fingertips feeling to make a proper contact. Animals can do that in 10 milliseconds. Fly build the contact in 10 milliseconds without thinking about it, without correcting something. It just put the feet on the surface and they stick. So what is different in on fly foot in comparison with our pillars? Well, the difference is in the contact shape. So if we compare, we go back to our animals and just make a comparison of the shapes of these hairs. And well, some shapes are spherical, some of them are quite flat, some of them are sort of parabolic, and some of them are torus-like. Well, some animals, they have even little suction cups, some aquatic beetles, for example. But 90% of animals which are able to walk on the ceiling, they have these band-like or spatula-like kind of structures. Uh, what they are good for? Why it should be spatula-like for good locomotion and fast locomotion on the ceiling? This is single tip, this is a single spatula of the beetle in the contact. 
So, and the, the surface is not absolutely flat. There is a scratch on the surface. And you see that this thin platelet, which is only 200 nanometer thin, can build proper contact even on nanoscale roughness. It is, of course, not challenging to build a contact on flat, um, on smooth surface. But even if there is some nanoscale roughness, animals are still able to adapt to the surface. Of course, not to any nanoscale roughness, but to some nanoscale roughness. Okay. So this, and again, another interesting observation from this image um, are these two little spines on the backside of the of, of the hair. What do they what they are good for? They, they, well, the good explanation for this is that, of course, animals have thousands of hairs which are, which are built in, in, in one array. And you can imagine that these kind of little horn-like structure prevent condensation, prevent adhesion of the hairs together. They keep the hairs apart in the array. And these, uh, these kind of horn-like structure, they also, um, um, help the animals to build adhesion by applied shear force in one direction. If animals share in one direction, in this direction, to the left side of the image, um, then this platelet jump into the contact and not just one, all 10,000 or million platelets jump immediately in the contact. If the animals share the feet in the opposite direction, then these platelets flip into the opposite direction and these horns prevent adhesion, prevent contact formation. So the whole control about adhesion built into this tiny little structure. And this is fascinating. Um, well, all animals we studied, they have hierarchical structure on the foot. What does it mean? It means that um, uh, that the hairs are built on the, on, in this case, in the case of fly, we call it pulvili. This is the adhesive organ, which is not rigid. This is quite floppy and adapt to the waviness of the surface. Then we have tiny little hairs, which adapt to the micro roughness. Then we have this platelet, this spatula, which adapt to nanoscale roughness. And then we have a fluid, which adapt to the molecular roughness of the surface. We have at least four hierarchical levels uh, in this adhesive, uh, ad adhesive structure design. Um, wh why? What is, wh what it is good for? So wh why nature makes such a complicated solution? The answer is quite simple. The majority of natural surfaces, they are, they are rough. And they are rough not, not only on one scale, they are rough on many different scales. And these different scales are overlapping. If you look on the natural roughness, there is a waviness of the surface. Then if you zoom in, there is a, a micro roughness, nano roughness, and so on and so on. And now imagine you have your, your nano uh, technology kind of rigid plate covered by nanoscale structures. They will not adhere because they will hang over big valleys of the natural waviness. So in order to build proper contact to these different roughnesses, you have to have something which make a proper contact to the waviness. Then on the top, you have to have something which build a contact to the micro roughness and so on and so on. You have to cope with different length scales, uh, which makes of course uh, biomimetics, well, technology quite difficult. The story is even, even more complicated because um, uh, this, 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 uh, these hairs are not made of one single material. It is even difficult technologically to build this, uh, these tiny little hairs uh, uh, and of course to build them in a gradient because uh, for example in the ladybird beetle um, uh, at the base uh, the structures are shorter at the tip they are longer and so on and so on uh, and this is the image in the scanning electron microscope this is a standard method we use in our research but if you use so-called confocal laser scanning microscopy, which provides us the information about material composition, then the images look like this. So what we learn from this is that uh, blue 
um, uh, um, colored structures. They are made of resilin, which is um, soft and um, a soft material um, which provide proper adaptation to the surface. And everything which is yellowish and reddish made of, um, of tanned rigid cuticle. So, but again, the question is, what is the difference in material properties? It is just a two times uh, different rigidity or 10 times different rigidity. And for this purpose, we do some, some again, experiments using atomic force microscopy, but uh, we don't measure adhesion here, but we measure material properties of a single hairs. And we make measurements along the, 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 the hairs, starting from the tip and end it at the base. And this is the result. At the, at the tip, you have like one megapascal stiffness. One megapascal stiffness, it is like a, like a soft rubber. And at the base, you have 10 gigapascal stiffness, which is something like very rigid rubber or very stiff wood, which means difference between one, one megapascal and 10 gigapascal is 10 orders of magnitude. You have a gradient materials with 10 orders of magnitude difference in the rigidity. Why it is, why it is important for the, for the animals? Because imagine if you would have the material which is floppy, then hairs would immediately stick together because they don't have enough rigidity to keep them apart. So if you would have material which is completely rigid, they would not build proper contact. So this is a compromise between keeping them apart and building proper contact with any kind of surface. So now is the question if the animal can adhere so well, how do they debond from the surface? And for this purpose, we did in the previous time, a lot of um, high-speed video recordings under the microscope. So this is really, um, well, test on the uh, on on the patient um, of the PhD students, um, and here you see the result. Um, so this is the house fly. Um, the, the images um, or the, the the movies are taken at thousand frames per second, and you see how the fly debond from the surface. So um, the first image showed this rotation. They use their clothes. They press on the clothes. I will repeat it. I don't know here now. They press on the clothes and peel off the adhesive pads. Okay, this is adhesive pads here. They press on the clothes and peel off. This is what we do usually if we remove scotch tape from the surface. But now you know why flies can just shift their feet forward and also debond from the surface. Because in this case, if they shift um, um, feet forward, then the peeling happened at the level of every single platelet, at the level of the, every single spatula. And spatula flip off in the opposite direction. Sometimes animals do this twisting, which also caused the bonding of single hairs. Sometimes they do pulling in the direction of the maximal force. It happens very seldom, but in some stress situation of the experiment, we observe it a couple of times. Okay, now what about biomimetics? What can we do with this knowledge? How can we use it for technology? Uh, this is quite challenging because the challenge is to integrate many different features we discussed today. So we have to use proper dimension and density of the structure, proper aspect ratio, the slope is important. I didn't discuss that much today, but this is important too. Um, structure should be hierarchically structured. Um, shape of the contact is important. Asymmetry with a proper motion during attachment and detachment is important. Gradient materials um, and uh, some nanoscale features on the top, which prevent con conglutination or condensation of hairs. So, this is really, really difficult to do. So what can be done? Maybe we can just apply a couple of features to get at least something, uh, technologically speaking. And that's what we did. We worked uh, already about 10 years together with the company, um, which produce fasteners. 
And um, uh, here, the idea was to implement at least some of the features we discussed today. For example, subdivide contact in many contacts uh, and use, using these kind of hair-like structures. Um, we have this hexagonal pattern because it is highest packing density. Uh, we use this thin plate-like head and this joint-like neck to strong adaptability to the surface profile and some aspect ratio also to stronger adaptability. And what is the result? The result is that we can, by having this kind of structure, we can improve adhesion very much. So here you see the results from the experiment I show you at the well, in the middle of the talk. Here is what we achieved uh, by using this kind of structure. And um, you see that we increase adhesion um, per apparent contact area and per real contact area, it is even stronger, which means that we have the same apparent area, but of course, this area has some gaps in between and it is much more sticky in comparison to the, um, to the flat surface, which is a good news. And of course, people, realized that this is a good idea and meanwhile there is a starting from 2005 where the first data were published uh, meanwhile there is a um, hundreds of publication on these what people called mushroom like structures which uh, with 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 these kind of um, uh, soft platelet on the teeth um, what is the advantage of this material in comparison to um, to for example to the scotch tape um, of course, everything is, it is, is, is contaminating in this world and um, also so-called self-cleaning service, they will contaminate after a while. Um, and also this material contaminate, uh, but it doesn't contaminate this qui that quickly as the smooth material. If you take smooth control made of the same material and make uh, contact, number of cycles like 300 times, then adhesion goes almost to zero. It doesn't stick anymore. There's, you measure no adhesion, but your structured material, uh, of course, also contaminating, but it doesn't contaminate that fast. Why? Because the contamination part particles will be collected in between um, the, the, the pillars and the pillars are still exposed for the while. So uh, the contamination will be uh, sort of delayed in the time. So you can use it for more cycles without contamination. But the good news is that even after a couple of hundreds of cycles, if the material is contaminated and doesn't stick at all, you can wash it with the soap and the entire adhesion is coming back because this adhesion is not based on the chemistry. This adhesion is not based on the glue. This adhesion is based just on the shape and distribution of the structures. Another good news is, and this was quite, uh, quite um, spontaneous um, and actually random observation. Um, some of, uh, of, of, of my, of my co-workers um, put the animals in the aquarium and realized that even the ladybird beetles, which usually not aquatic insects, then they can walk in the aquarium underwater. Um, and uh, this is quite, quite fascinating. So you see now that this lady, ladybird beetle walking in aquarium and a fish um, uh, is swimming in the vicinity uh, and is actually impressed by that, like we were impressed. And um, the, um, the, if you can see, I hope you can see at the tip of the feet of the beetle, you see some silvery, some whitish spots because this animal can trap air on underwater. Uh, they can stabilize air bubble underwater by having this, uh, this array of hairs and use air underwater as a glue. Because we said at the beginning of the talk that capillary interactions are due to the interface between fluid, air, and solid. Here, animals are in the fluid conditions, but they take air underwater and use it as a glue and generate capillarity underwater. Um, why we don't see this phenomenon normally? 
at, on any surface because any surface will immediately lose um, air bubbles underwater. So in order to stabilize air bubbles and use them as a glue underwater, you have to have an, an array of hairs. You can actually um, um, do the same thing with artificial material. So you can trap air uh, also by artificial structure and generate quite strong adhesion underwater. So what is what it is good for? What can you do um, if you have this material? By the way, you can buy this material. Uh, the company producing that called Binder, uh, and this is patented. And um, um, initially we played indeed with the robot with the colleagues from Cleveland. Uh, here you see the robot which can walk on the wall. So please look carefully on the tips of the of the of the tape. You see it is not the scotch tape because it's jump out of the surface immediately. It is not like you have to pull a lot and remove and you, you have to generate a lot of force to to remove it from the surface. No it's the robot build the contact with the whole feet and then peeling off. And yeah, this is exactly what we discussed at the beginning. You generate good contact at once. You have a strong adhesion in the middle of the cycles, then you peel off. Okay. So then you can use these kind of things for pick and drop. So this is the Lego robot built by, by our students many years ago. And uh, uh, presented that on the on the Hanover trade. And um, this robot worked uh, like five days, making thousands of cycles every day with the same piece of material. At that time, we realized 5,000 cycles, no problem. It is still sticky. Uh, meanwhile, we know that this material can make about 2 millions of cycles with pretty, with sufficient adhesion um, for this 200 gram uh, mobile phone. Okay. You have to use it even to hold the man on the ceiling. So this is my technician, Achim Özert. Um, his weight is 50, uh, 54 kilograms. Uh, this is of course not that easy to hold your body with one with one uh, um, um, arm on the ceiling. Um, but 20 by 20 um, centimeters of um, um, of this uh, tape is sufficient to hold the adult man on the ceiling. Well, in the end of my talk, I would make two important points. The first point is that these kind of structures appeared in the evolution not in order to adhere on your windows. They appeared on the they appear for the adhesion on the plant surface, as, as I mentioned before. In my opinion, and it is very important to look into plants and see what are the adaptation of plants on one side to attract some insects and on the other side to keep them away from some surfaces. So this is also the uh, kind of research we're doing right now quite intensively. Um, and uh, we also work uh, together with the people from the agriculture because it's also interesting, uh, might be interesting matter for the biocontrol to um, uh, maybe breed plants with uh, some specific uh, surfaces with, for example, uh, wax crystals or some trichomes, which or some uh, kind of uh, um, uh, soap-like coatings. This is, this is, uh, th these are the methods which, uh, which uh, um, uh, plant use to keep insects away. Uh, and maybe it is really a promising approach for some bio method against, against the insect pest. So thank you so much for your attention. Uh, I hope you have some questions. Um, and I, I hope very much um, that you, um, uh, after this talk, has have uh, much higher respect to the ordinary fly and to the insects. And I'm, I'm pretty sure next time, if you see the fly, uh, you would remember what kind of fascinating features they have on the feet and how much physics is going on then and how the evolution work together with this with this kind of physics to make really 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 fascinating um, um, uh, uh, materials and surface structures which are also interesting for technology thank you so much 
Thank you so much, Stanislav. That was absolutely fascinating. And I will never, ever watch a fly walking on my window in the same way ever, ever again. We've had we've had several, several different questions. We've, we've got lots of questions coming now. I think people were so wrapped in what you were saying that they couldn't think of questions before, but there's lots coming in now. Um, someone's asked, um, does the speed of contact and release depend upon the surface? Because they've noticed that flies can walk and attach to most things. Well, the speed must play um, an important role, but I must admit there is no real um, proper studies which which was done. Spontaneous, I would say there is no big difference in what fly is doing on different surfaces, uh, but it might be that uh, depending on uh, um, the chemical properties of the surface or depending on the roughness, they do mm -hmm. slightly different or they do it at different speed. Uh, in any case, the, in order to generate the maximum adhesion, I would say uh, from the physical point of view, uh, the best way to generate strong adhesion would be to make a contact very slowly um, and break the contact very quickly. It is the same thing uh, happened for any capillary interactions. If you if you wrap the liquid bridge quickly, you generate stronger force. So mm -hmm. um, it would be really interesting uh, question for the future research. So maybe some research into how how fast flies do things on different surfaces might be something interesting. Well, I, I mentioned that the, the contact uh, formation and breakage take approximately the same time, which about 10 mm -hmm. milliseconds. Um, but we didn't do any any statistical um, um, statistical uh, proof on different surfaces. So maybe plenty we have to look at there's So there's plenty still to do, isn't there? Um, great. So someone else has asked, um, would would um, plants also attract insects to help with pollination by adapting their surfaces? So thinking about those kind of conical cells that there are on petals, is is that something that that is an interaction I, I must that admit, might happen? We did, we did some um, some 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 testing on the on the conical petals. Uh, it's a really mm -hmm. very good question, um, and uh, in, actually the adhesion is lower. So as soon as you have a corrugation on the surface, usually adhesion goes down. So the, the maximal adhesion is on the absolutely flat surface. As soon as you have to have some, if, if, as soon as you have some, some micro and nanostructure, adhesion is going down. Um, well, um, attracting um, from the point of view of increasing adhesion, again, there is no evidence for that. But of course, um, there are some, uh, some, some, some traps, some uh, flower traps, which trap insects and hold them due to uh, some very plants. <laughs> wax crystals. Uh, they hold them for a while in the in in in, in the tra well. There's even even several different methods um, of uh, of trapping uh, insect for pollination. For example, um, uh, Aristolochia uh, plants. They trap them by um, by by using combination of uh, trichomes and uh, on, and tiny little wax crystals which contaminate feet. Uh, and for example, um, some um, um, some arum plants, um, they have um, soap-like fluid droplets which uh, reduce adhesion of the oily um, uh, um, oily coverage. Because as soon yeah. as you have oil in contact with a soap-like uh, fluid uh, adhesion will be also reduced. But after a while, these part of the plant become dry and animals can can fly again. So from this point of view, there is some attraction, but usually plants uh, um, uh, use almost always, no matter it is carnivory plants, use the insect for, for feeding on them or using them as a pollinator to keep them for just for the while in the plant. Uh, they always use adhesion reduction as a method. Uh, mm -hmm. And, and uh, actually nobody shown that adhesion is enhanced by the plant to attract animals. So right. it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's a con con some contradiction because plant attract 
um, uh, um, pollinators by the optical cues, and that's why this very specific kind of uh, um, uh, of, of of cells on the petals. Uh, for the for the enhancing scattering of light, um, uh, but uh, they, by the same mean they reduce their adhesion. Oh, that's that's really interesting because they want them to come in but go away. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, that's that's absolutely fascinating. Yeah, uh, people people who have um, followed our YouTube series will remember several months ago a really interesting talk about adhesion in in nepenthes in um, pitcher plants. And about how how the surface of pitcher plants works. Um, there's another really. Um, in, uh, somebody has asked, could you please say the name of the company again that you've worked with? Binder, Binder. Binder. So you can drop me an email, and I will send you the whole information. Uh, okay, so great. We find yeah, someone, write... someone's someone's asked about that. Yes, if you write Gorb Kiel, uh, you immediately get my email address. Just uh, write me, and I will. Okay, great. Thank you. That's very very generous. Okay, so could you give, a, someone else has asked this, if you could give um, a reference to a paper which clarifies how the wall walking robot released grip as it, you know, how that wall walking thing kind of released yes. its grip. Again, I can send you a couple of publications uh, okay. from, the, from this collaboration with the people with Cleveland. We explain exactly what's going on by the contact formation and breakage. Absolutely no problem. Just drop me an email. This would be much easier. I bet it's on your CV online as well. I'm yeah. pretty sure. <laughs> um, so Alex has asked, what surface features stop insect feet from sticking? Which okay. is kind of the reverse. Okay. Uh, I don't quite exactly understand what you mean with stopping insect feet sticking. So, so I guess he, what he's asking is, is what kinds of surfaces do plants or other surfaces have that would prevent an insect ah, from see. sticking? Uh, actually, honestly, I also prepared a couple of slides, uh, but <laughs> maybe, uh, well, I I really expected this uh, this 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 question, so I will immediately go maybe to. to I to thought this, this is what was going to happen. <laughs> well, maybe, right. maybe maybe actually better to this one. For example, here you see uh, the plant surface where insects ha have a really hard time to stick to. And uh, this is, these all structures are in the range between 0 0.3 micrometers, um, which means 300 nanometers to maybe two microns. Uh, mm -hmm. This is the so-called wax crystals. This is a, uh, three-dimensional wax projections on the on, on the plant surface where animals have really hard time to stick. Um, usually these kind of plants or this kind of structure you can see as, as a kind of powdery uh, appearance um, uh, and then um, actually you can also find these plants very easily after after rain uh, because they also unwettable. Uh, but of course, the effect on insects is a little bit different because, as I mentioned before, insects use the partially oily secretion, and oil still can partially wet these surfaces, but still, because of the structure, the contact area will be strongly reduced, or contact area will be not sufficient to uh, to, 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 to hold um, the, the animal mass. Mm -hmm. And for example, if you measure uh, adhesive force on different roughnesses, that's what we, what we did using the centrifuge device. Um, maybe I will show you very shortly, how do we test the animals? Uh, the, 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 I, don't know, <laughs> I don't know if it is a fun for animals uh, to withstand this experiment, but this is the way how to test different kind of surfaces and you see that flat surface which have zero roughness is quite sticky for animals or animal can stick well to them and starting from three microns uh, adhesion will will be increased but between 0 0.3 and one micron maybe two micron roughness this is exactly the roughness of this um, crystalline wax projection of the plant there is almost no adhesion so these are things like lotuses and plane trees. This and, is like know, the lotus, like but, but the lotus effect has, has something to do with unwettability because lotus effect has something to do with water. Um, mm -hmm. 
wetting. And of course, these surfaces are not wetted by water, but they are easily wetted by, by, um, by oil of insects. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These surfaces, yeah. by the way, can uh, we, for example, you mentioned Nepenthes. Nepenthes had, has at least two different surfaces mm -hmm. which prevent adhesion by two different physical effects. The first effect is, um, um, is hydroplaning uh, because the rim of the Nepenthes is covered by, by water. And because I mentioned insects, they use also fluid and usually it is at least part of the fluid is uh, lipid-like. Then, you know, uh, there is no proper contact between or proper interaction between oil and water. And that's why surface rim is, or the rim of the, of the Nepenthes is slippery. But inside the, the pitcher, there are tiny little wax crystals which are very brittle and they contaminate the legs. So this is another possibility. Mm -hmm. And these kind of, or some of these crystals, they suck out because they are also lipid, like they suck out lipids. They absorb lipid uh, uh, materials from the food and animals have a dry feet and it doesn't work too. So I think lotus effect is only one part of this, of the explanation. There is many more effects on plants and insect feed than just due to the lotus effect. That, that it, I mean, nature is always so much more complicated than we ever think, isn't it? Um, someone's also said, and there's lots and lots of messages coming through saying, thank you so much for the amazing presentation. This has been really great. Um, someone's asked, do the nano coatings used for cars prevent the adhesion of these structures. So, so what's the relationship between the, the nano coatings that people are starting to use on, on automobiles? Um, honestly speaking, I don't know exactly how is the nano which automotive industry claim is really nano. And uh -huh. uh, you know, nano coatings, because, because people use this kind of lacquer um, with some particles inside. If these particles are really at the nanoscale and really sticking out of the locker, then I can imagine it will prevent insect adhesion. Mm -hmm. But of course, we have to di 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 discriminate between two different adhesions. So in this talk, I discuss about adhesion between animal feet and the surface. But of course, if you drive the car at, I don't know, 150 kilometers per hour and, um, and the aphids are just squeezed on the surface, then maybe this nano coating would make things even worse because they will, uh, <laughs> the fluid will cover this nanoscale roughness and actually solidify and stick even stronger to the surface. So yeah, that's, yeah, that's has, an interesting and especially thought. these, you know, the inside of insects are protein based and proteins can be can be really, really sticky. So <laughs> I, I don't know, I, I didn't work together with automotive. It is definitely worth of studying that. It's interesting point. Yeah, I, interesting. I would be, that's I would a, be that's skeptical. A... Yeah. Okay. So there's a there's a skepticism there, but actually another area for more for more for more study. I mean, the great thing about insects, in a way, is that is that there's so much more that we need to learn about them in all kinds of ways. There's another question here um, about whether fl about flies leaving the fluid behind um, when they so so do they have this fluid only when they're standing on a surface or do they yeah. actually have this fluid there when they're just flying around no no no, no. They, they they use they use the fluid only if they um if they stay on the surface and uh it is again fascinating but of course in in such a short time i cannot tell you everything we know about this system. that's because you're gonna have to come back <laughs> Well, with pleasure. Uh, if, if you want to talk about, about plants, for example, there will be another specific talks to show the diversity of plants. But uh, to this question, um, um, the, the fluid is indeed coming out only if animals build the contact and only if the animals should climb. 
if they stay on the normal surface and don't have to climb on the horizontal surface and don't have to climb, then mm -hmm. adhesive feet are usually not in the contact because they can walk without, without anything. So they don't have to stick, in fact. They can just run, no problem. But if they should generate some force, for example, pulling something, or if they walk on the wall or on the ceiling, then the feet come into the contact by, by quite specific mechanism. And only then, if they're in the contact, they press out tiny little droplets of the secretion in the contact. So they spare the fluid. Otherwise, you know, insects um, 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 try to keep as much as possible their fluid because mm -hmm. these animals are so small that um, the relationship between the surface and the volume is so disadvantageous for the surface. They have to be really careful to lose the fluid. That's why only if they in contact and only if they should stick, they use the fluid. Otherwise, not. So does that mean? So does that mean that that if a fly lands on a on a window that's hor that's you know a, a window, yeah. that the fluid is secreted for it to to land on the window, even though it doesn't walk, or does it have to walk to have the fluid? Secreted? Well, if they if they build the contact, then they generate fluid in this moment. Of course, the they, they fluid is secreted before. Well, the fluid is secreted before, and the fluid is stored in the food in so-called spongy layer. It is like a spongy layer filled with a fluid, and that's why insects um, have always some storage of the fluid. So they should not produce the fluid right now. And they, they, because of having this certain storage of the fluid, they not use it quickly. So they, they can, you, you, can, you can cut off the food and make, uh, I would say, 300, 500 contacts and you still feel certain adhesion. But after a while, um, this stored fluid is used and adhesion is going down. So this spongy layer store the fluid. Um, yeah, this. Yeah, so it's, so it's almost a, it's almost it's something that's controlled by the by the fly. Well, what is controlled by the by by the fly? Maybe a good example to explain what happened would be maybe not exactly the fly feed because in the fly it is a little bit more complicated. There is a lot of active control going on. Mm -hmm. Maybe a good example would be the bee. In the bee, there are claws like this. Mm -hmm. And the adhesive organ is located like here, up the claws, like that, or between claws, a little bit between claws in the middle. Yeah. So if the if the um, um, if the animal build the contact with the rough surface, of course, the claws are coming into the contact and engage with a certain roughness. Mm -hmm. And that means that if the roughness is above 10 microns, then there is no need to use adhesive organ. But if the roughness is lower than 10 microns, then what happens is they sleep over the surface, the claws are sleeping over the surface, and then this surface is coming into the play automatically. So animals even don't use, in this case, any sensory system. That's what we called not reflex because there is no neuro system used in this case. We called it preflex because the mechanical system does automatically the right thing depending on the surface roughness. Ah, yeah. Somebody has actually asked a question just now is do caterpillars also use this kind of adhesion? Caterpillar system is a little bit more complicated and to a certain extent <laughs> different. Wow. Well, caterpillars, they have, a, they have a soft pad. And this soft pad is surrounded by thousands of tiny little hooks. So in these tiny little hooks, um, they, 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 this, this pad is aversible. So they build a contact with, the, with, this, with this soft pad. And if they... Um, retract the pad a little bit, then these thousands of tiny little hooks come into the contact and grasp the surface. 
this is one possibility but if the surface is absolutely smooth like glass then this irreversible pad generates some adhesion so this is adhesive pad and instead of close thousands of little hooks which help engaging and i must admit caterpillars are more complicated also due to the fact that many of them they cover the surface by own silk and for example many mites and many spiders do the same thing even on for example it is 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 very fascinating method of caterpillars many caterpillars live on these non sticky surfaces of plants and one might, might ask the question, how do they live on that if they cannot stick and move on it? Well, the explanation is they generate a kind of silky threads. And actually, they engage with the silky threads. It's like a carpet going over all these challenging surfaces of the plant. And the same thing about, about the mites. Some, some, some plant mites, they do the same thing. They, they can live on very challenging plant surfaces. Which, uh, which are not um, infected by any other animals, just by these one highly specialized to make these carpets. Oh, that's fascinating. I mean, so there's, so there's just so much to learn. Well, I want to thank you so much for coming along tonight and giving us a really amazing final talk in our Insect Week series. I'd also like to congratulate Padma for putting together what was an amazing series of talks for Insect Week that's kind of opened up to us the, the world of insects in an incredibly new and really interesting way. So thank you so much, Padma, and thank you very much, Stanislaus, for coming, up, coming along tonight. And we hope to see you again another time soon. Thank you thank again. You so thank much. you so much. It was a honor for me. Thank you so much. Padma, thank you. Thank you, thank you for the organizing this. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.